Okay, in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act, PL 1975, Chapter 231, adequate notice of this regular meeting of the Planning Board of the Township has been provided. Uh, if everybody can please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Councilman and Larson? Here. Theodore Chase? Here. Jan Brandt? Here. Sammy Siobhan? Here. Jennifer Ragno? Yeah, here. Mustafa Mansray? Here. Charles Brown? Here. Robert Thomas? Here. Mahir Rafiq and Rebecca Hilbert asked to be excused. Chairman Arsini? Here. Uh, before we get started, just want to acknowledge a new member of the planning board that was just sworn in tonight. That's Jan Brandt. So welcome, Jan. Thank you. So um, we have, but we have no hearings tonight. So we'll just go. It'll be a very short meeting. So minutes from January fourth, regular meeting. Uh, entertain a motion. I'll move the minutes. Second. Theodore Chase. Yes. Sammy Shaban. Yes. Charles Brown. Yes. Robert Thomas. Yes. Chairman Orsini. Yes. Uh, minutes, um, make a motion to move the minutes for January 11th, 2020. So Second. Councilman Aborson? Yes. Theod yes. Uh, Theodore Chase? Yes. Sammy Shaban? Yes. Mustafa Mansray? Yes. Charles Brown? Yes. Chairman Orsini? Yes. Oh, wait. Uh, Bob, you can't move. You didn't, you weren't there. I'll move it. Didn't know I missed. Okay. Um, and I'll second it. Okay, so we're moving Charles and no. then Mike. Do I have to recall them, Jim? No. Okay, thank you. So lastly, the regular meeting from January 18th, and I know I wasn't there, so I can't do anything about that. Move those. Second. Councilman Amborson? Yes. Theodore Chase? Yes. Sammy Shabon? Yes. Jennifer Ragnow? Yes. Mustafa Mansray? Yes. Charles Brown? Yes. Robert Thomas? Yes. Okay. So we have two resolutions. Bar BQ tonight, PLN 19 extension of time. I will. I'll second. Okay, I'll move it. <laughs> you can second it. Charles moved it? No, I did. Oh, or and then, and then Jen seconded. Okay. Theodore Chase? Yes. Sammy? Well, Jen, you can't second. You weren't here. Or you had no vote. The only people I that... Oh, oh, Charles? Okay. <laughs> Theodore Chase? Yes. Sammy Shabon? Yes. Charles Brown? Yes. Robert Thomas? Yes. Chairman Orsini? Yes. And then we have uh, McDonald's USA. I also can't do anything about that, but we'll entertain a motion in a second. Oh, I'll move it. Second. Councilman Ambarson? Yes. Theodore Chase? Yes. Sammy Siobhan? Yes. Jennifer Ragnow? Yes. Mustafa Mansray? Yes. Charles Brown? Yes. Robert Thomas? Yes. Okay. Um, that takes care of our resolution. So we have a couple of discussion items. One extension of time, executive drive investment. We will, we will find you a mic, hold on, yeah. hold on a sec. Good evening, members of the board. I'm John DeLuca of the firm Boris Golden Foley, Vignola, Hyman, and Stahl, uh, representing Executive Drive Investment, uh, requesting a one-year extension of time. Uh, I haven't had the pleasure of appearing before the planning board uh, before, so uh, it's nice to meet all of you. I do recognize some of you from my appearances before the zoning board, but I'll just briefly state uh, the planning board on February 3rd, 2021, uh, approved the uh, major, uh, f the final and the preliminary and final major site plan approval 
uh, for this project. That was on February 3rd, 2021. The resolution was adopted on April 21, 2021, and is uh, due to expire on April 21st, 2023. Uh, we are still resolving some issues with the uh, sewer authority. We expect that to take um, just a couple of months. Uh, so under uh, the municipal land use law, we are requesting for the uh, one-year extension of that approval so that we can meet all of those uh, conditions of approval. And this is your first? This is our first, first. yes. Um, so March 1st, 2024, year that from is, today? That is correct. Okay. Um, I'll make a well, motion. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, no, uh, one year from uh, the, the date of expiration, so that would be uh, April 21st, 2024. Okay, Just, yeah. April 21st, 2024. Correct, thank okay. you. Well, I'll make a motion to um, grant them the extension of time. Second. Councilman Morrison? Yes. Theodore Chase? Yes. Dan Brandt? Yes. What's happening? Uh, Sammy Siobhan? Yes. Jennifer Ragnow? Yes. Mustafa Mansray? Yes. Charles Brown? Yes. Robert Thomas? Yes. Chairman Orsini? Yes. Um, thank you very much. That thank you very easy. much. Um, have a good night, everyone. And we have another extension of time, which is uh, to Birch Glen. Good evening. Uh, my name is Catherine Kim from Cleary, Giacobbe, Alfieri, and Jacobs on behalf of the applicant 2G Birch Glen LLC. Um, so we're here tonight requesting also an extension of our approval, but our situation is a little bit different. So for some background, um, Sycamore Developer LLC was the original developer that obtained the approval under docket number PLN-17-00008 for a major subdivision um, approval with associated variances. And under that approval, the um, board um, granted the approval on December 6, 2018, and it was memorialized on February 21st, 2018. Um, thereafter, Sycamore developers did obtain the additional three extensions thereafter. But before, so setting the time, the deadline for our, our approval for February 21st, 2023. Um, however, it was brought to our attention that on October 2nd, 2019, Sycamore developers um, obtained amended approvals because um, some of the easements that they were seeking to implement were uh, amended per other outside agencies. So we're asking the board here tonight to consider that the because of the amended approval we saw in 2019, that the clock on the approval did reset as of the second amended approval. And we're seeking the board to consider extending the approval per that new date the board approved the amended application. So um, I'm going to let Jim speak to some of this, uh, but just for those who aren't familiar, this is the residential subdivision on Cedar Grove Lane, um, rest of property. Um, so that's. I believe that the board has the discretion to reset the commencement time for the period of protection. All right, and that would start as of December 18 of 2019. Now. That's correct. Okay. And so you should be happy with that as yes. a starting point. Okay. All right. So your original two years of protection got you to December 18 of 2021. That's correct. Now I understand everyone was not laboring under the misconception, but everybody just started to think about the extension in terms of the original approval. And you've had a number of extensions. Yes, that's okay. correct. So with the board's mm -hmm. indulgence, my suggestion is we consider that one extension that was granted was until December 18 of 2022. Mm -hmm. And if the board is of a mind, it has up to three extensions to give. It can give tonight a second extension, which would uh, get you to December 18 of 2020. That is correct. Is that satisfactory? Yes. You have that discretion board. It's up to you whether or not you want to exercise it. Move to extend the extra, uh, extension. Second. To, to the new time. To December 18, 2023? Yes. Thank you. Second. Council. Oh, we're good. Good. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, Councilman Morrison? 
Yes. Theodore Chase? Yes. Jan Brandt? Yes. Tammy Siobhan? Yes. Jennifer Ragnow? Yes. Mustafa Mansre? Yes. Charles Brown? Yes. Robert Thomas? Yes. Chairman Arsini? Yes. You too. Um, bids. Do you want to do the right to farm and then? Yes, that, that's And then yeah. we'll open to the public. Yeah. Or, oh, yeah. All right. I'll, I'll I'll do it real quick. Okay. Uh, what you have before you is your typical referral on a land use ordinance uh, to the planning board to determine its consistency with the master plan. I'll give you a thirty second uh, brief history. Several years ago, uh, there were some uh, commercial preserved farms down in the southern end of the, the state that were experiencing uh, issues with uh, local government having certain type of special events. So the legislature drafted uh, some bills to address, address that. And over the course of two years, that, that legislation has morphed. The township had significant early concerns about the legislation because it didn't uh, have any type of local review or control. And it also allowed, in, in our mind, an inordinate amount of special events with large amounts. During the course of the last two years, the legislation has been amended. Uh, the governor at the end of last year actually vetoed the bill. They then went to committee and, and just was recently passed uh, the governor signed it and it became effective immediately. As such, the, the law, the legislation allows a local municipality to have review as long as it's in, in accordance with the standards. What this ordinance does is it recognizes the new law and it puts into effect uh, the process for the municipality to look at the public health and safety concerns, much like the, we do with special events that we have all through the town, like the St. Matthias. They come, they get a special events permit. Our technical review committee reviews the public health and safety, the traffic, the amount of bathrooms, et cetera. We get a site plan. We make recommendations, and council approves it. This follows pretty much the same procedure. The application we have is modeled exactly the same and has all the same requirements. The only difference is, is it won't go to the council for approval because the idea with the right to farm is to make things less onerous. The TRC will still be the one who reviews it and makes recommendations. So what this ordinance does, it just puts the regulations in effect and allows us the local control to uh, protect the health and public safety. Thanks, Vince. So it's entirely consistent with the state law, nothing above and beyond, nothing less. That is very true. Okay. Board members have any questions for Vince on this? I think it's good and we should uh, forward our recommendation to the council. That's what you're looking for, right? Mm, exactly. Yeah, you want to make sure that it, it, you make the determination that, that it is not inconsistent with the master plan. That's, mm -hmm. that's, you can make the recommendation that they adopt it too, of course. But right. Should I say those words? I think it is consistent with the master plan not and recommend that they... Yeah. Not inconsistent. Oh, with the well, it's not it's inconsistent, it. therefore, <laughs> it is consistent. With it. Yes, it is. <laughs> no, not necessarily. And Jim, and, and we've had that discussion before. <laughs> you would think intuitively, but not actually. And recommend that council adopt it. Sounds good to me. Is that, that's your motion. I will second it. Bob Thomas made it first. Yes. Councilman Umborson? Yes. Theod uh, Theodore Chase? Well, the one aspect of this I would just ask about a little is the requirement that application be made 60 days before the date of the event. And I just wonder how often will uh, farm owners have all their ducks in a row and all of these details ready 60 days in advance. Yeah, the, the, that is the same requirement for the special events. And just like with special events, and as, as you and, and as councilman would make you aware that often they don't get it in time, 
and we look at that circumstance because we're, we're not trying to be onerous. What we try to do the 60 days and what we're doing is we'll make all the commercial farms aware of this requirement. There's only a couple that we expect will actually fail themselves of this, so we'll have the discussions. It's not meant to be a hard date, what it's meant to do, because it gives us the time to plan and then time to adjust. And as you know, there are many times over the years for special events, people came in sometimes a week before, and we ran around, and you, the council actually approved them after the special event was done. So it's not meant to prevent them in any, any manner. Okay. Yes, then. Dan Bram? May I ask a question, too? <laughs> Okay, I think it, oh no, it's still, I thought maybe it was from yours. Vince, so when I looked over all the, um, the different items you had, one of the things I was wondering, since these are gonna be outdoor events, are there, is there any protocol in place as far as, let's say there's a big storm coming? Because I know you, you have all this in place to protect people that are going to these events. So I'm just wondering when there's lightning or a storm coming or some sort of event coming, are there any rules in place to protect the public's you know, health and well-being as far as that goes? Well, first, don't assume that they're all outside events. One, one of our larger farms has an indoor venue that has been used in the past. That's number one. We don't have any local ordinances, nor am I aware of any state laws or regulations that protect the health and public safety in regard to rain or, 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 or lightning or anything like that. That's, that's the responsibility of the venue, which you would hope that they would follow common sense procedures if there's lightning because they need, they're insured. And if they don't, they put themselves at risk. Okay, yeah, for many years I worked at a camp and everything was outside and we always had to have things in place, you know, our protocols. So, um, so um, thank you for the answer and yes. Sammy Siobhan? Yes. Jennifer Ragno? Yes. Mustafa Mansray? Yes. Charles Brown? Uh, I'm gonna say yes, but I have a, uh, a question regarding protection against a special event becoming or operating like a permanent event. I don't see anything regarding a set time frame on how long said special event can be in effect. The, 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 the law only allows it to be a one day event. I don't see that it, anywhere in the it, it's, it's, not in, it's not in the ordinance, it's in, it's in the law. The, 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 the two provisions are that if you have, the, the farm has between 10 and 100 thousand dollars annually in revenue, they can have up to 15 special events per calendar year, of which two can have 250 or more. The law further specifies they, they can only go for one day. And if you have over 100,000, you can have 26 events, six may be more than 250. The law itself, the legislation spells it out. Like I said, we were not making any attempt to manage the law, we're just putting in effect the ability for us to review when they have a event in accordance with the law. Yeah, I just think that level of specificity, given that most New Jerseyans don't read the law, that's where it will help to see consistency between the ordinance and the law itself. So putting it somewhere where it's more accessible for the person that will be applying could be beneficial. Well, and, and like I said before, I didn't tell you, but when our open space consultant, Tara, is gonna send a copy of both our regulations, the application, and the, st and the state law, and have conversations with all of our preserved farms. So they'll, they'll have that information in, in front of them. I will tell you that the two most likely ones to avail themselves of have already talked to us about that. So they're, they're fully aware <coughs> there, but we're, we will make sure that all of the commercial farms have that information. And just to be clear, the the reason I'm bringing it up is not just for them, but it's also about their neighbors and other people throughout the township who care about how farms are presenting themselves here. So it's for everyone, not just them, which is why making it more publicly accessible. It's a small ask I think would be beneficial, but I, I vote yes. Uh, Robert Thomas? Yes. And Chairman Rossini? Yes. 
Um, of course, we have to open to the public for general planning comments, so I'll make a motion to do that now. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 The meeting is open to the public for any general planning comments since it's your only chance tonight since we don't have any hearings that will have their own separate opening. Being no takers, I move to close the public session. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And with that, I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Under 30. All in favor? I say it under. He said it was going to be over.